Thank you, Jimmy and Edie. You all singing along? Sometimes a message is born out of something that you just went through in your life or something that you observed. And uh, I've always said in everything there's a message and there's a message in everything. Uh, right before COVID hit, we had made a commitment that we were going to pray more. And COVID disturbed a lot of that because of being afraid to touch each other, hold each other, all those kind of things. And we shut down service for a little while. And we went outside. And uh, since then, uh, God has blessed us. We've been able to come back. We've been able to uh, see folks saved. We've been able to see folks join the church. Amen. We've been able to experience a lot of things. But uh, I tell you, after, after Sunday service, uh, last Sunday, I was very disappointed in myself. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 6 first. Ephesians chapter 6. I really don't know what this message holds. I really don't. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of a lot of complaints, not from you all, but from other pastors talking about how every service they go to now, everybody's afraid to minister to each other and still afraid to to come and all those things. And they, and it has taken a toll on the local church. It's taken a toll on a lot of things, but uh, uh, I have. Uh, and I think uh, Jimmy Duncan put it about as good as you could put it uh, here a while back. Uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't raised to be afraid of everything and everybody. I just wasn't raised that way. Amen? Yeah. Uh, but now there's also, uh, you have to be safe. You have to be as smart as you know how to be and all these things. But when it affects the local church, and, and maybe that's not what happened, but your, your pastor... Uh, had something happen to him Sunday. And here's what Ephesians 6, 18 says. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We are <clears throat> supposed to be, according to that scripture, praying always. Yeah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. And was it were we supposed to be praying what? In the Spirit. And watching. Uh, it's, it's, it's a known thing that if you were to go with, with me, if you've ever been with me to an H&R Ministries event and you're in a room full of inmates, uh, especially some that, that I've been in a crowd with, uh, when uh, if I give a message or if Harold Riley gives it or one of you women share with the other women, sometimes when you close a service out, you will naturally say, uh, already ahead of time to some of your folks, please be watching at invitation time. You be watching and see the response. You be ready for that. And uh, I can assure you the first time that I went behind uh, the four walls of Angola prison and I was, I was in a room with, with 50, 50 men that were condemned to life, most of them for murder, uh, I did look. Amen? Yep. I had my head up. I was watching <laughs> what was going on. But after God's Holy Spirit came down in that room and saved some men, Amen. I wasn't afraid anymore. Right. And uh, but what, what I'm afraid of is when I miss someone. Yep. And that happened, that happened this Sunday at our church. And it's your pastor's fault. And... Uh, it's been it's brought to my attention by well-meaning folks that love to see people minister to. So we had a we had a young man. I mean, I'm just I'm just sharing from my heart tonight. We had a young man come forward Sunday, and your pastor had his head down and didn't see him. And somebody else came up and prayed with him. And when I caught him out of the corner of my eye with tears running down his cheeks, I realized that I'd miss someone. That I'd miss someone. 
And I know I wasn't the only one probably that missed him. But I, I pray that we don't ever let who somebody is, where they're from, or what's going on to keep us from praying with someone. Yeah. And that's, what hap that's what's happened to all of us. That's what's happened to all of us as folks go forward to pray or come forward and have a need. And the first thing that, that Satan does is he whispers to you what can happen to you. Am I right? Am I right? Has anybody ever had Satan convince you you need to go pray with somebody? No. It's always going to be the opposite, isn't it? It's always going to be the opposite. And so I, I've, I've tried to take this verse to heart as I read it, trying to prepare for tonight. We're supposed to be, I'm supposed to be watching for that opportunity. For that person who has that broken look in their face and in their eyes. You and I see it every Sunday with somebody, don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen? I pray that we are so careful. I pray that your pastor be more careful. He's not the one that's supposed to have his head down not watching what's going on. The only thing I need to, to do was to go to him at Lifeline and apologize. And he was very thankful for it. The person that came to pray with him I'm convinced, other than you leading somebody to Jesus Christ, the greatest thing you can do for anybody is pray for them. Amen. And not that flippant thing that we do all the time that we just, as we say in passing, I've already said it several times this week over the phone and today at the funeral home, we'll be praying for you, be lifting you up in prayer. Sunday before last, Thomas Thompson had some friends in here from Florida. You know, after that service, they they wrapped their arms around me, a total stranger, and they prayed for me. Amen. I think we've been missing that a lot. I think we miss it a whole lot. Jesus was very personal. Most of the scriptures you find about Jesus Christ, he placed his hand on them somewhere. As Brother Ryan Maker Sunday night, I preached at Oscar Baptist Sunday night as he explained to his congregation, he said, look, I, I don't expect you all to waller on each other. But he said, if somebody's hurting and they need prayer, If the Holy Spirit guides you, that's your key. If the Holy Spirit guides you, you need to go pray with them. Is this making any sense? Amen. Is this where we're at? When he says pray, prayer and supplication in the Spirit, but then you go to Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Can I ask you something? How, how do we pray without the Holy Ghost? Can we just offer up some words to sound good? Can we offer up some so that other people can hear us that Jesus warned about in Matthew 6? We can. Look at Matthew chapter 6 just for a minute. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. It said, Take heed that you do not your alms before men. Now in King James Version, that word alms, it means to cry out uh, with a compassionate act toward poor or toward the needy. 
Take heed that you not do your own before men to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. In other words, don't show off. Amen. That thine alms, alms may be in secret. And thy father would see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly. It's a common practice between quite a few pastors that I know. They're very good from time to time to send me a send me a text real quick. Just pop me once. I'm praying for you right now. I want to tell you something. I, pre I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. There again. Other than you leading somebody to Jesus Christ. I think that's the greatest honor we have. As believers in Jesus Christ. I believe right there next to it. Is your freedom. To pray for somebody. Yeah. That's the greatest responsibility. That you can have. And that is the greatest thing. That you can do for them. There's nothing greater you can do for somebody than to pray for them. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 says this. You're familiar with this verse. It says the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now look over to verses 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when you combine those verses with Romans 8, 16, that tells me that I am a child of God because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Yeah. It also is telling me that someone else is a child of God if they have the Spirit of God inside of them. Is that not correct? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he's telling us in those verses that the Spirit of God knows the need that we have, and if he knows the need that we have, he knows the need that our, these are our brothers and sisters. Does anybody get that? Amen. We're the children of God. He said, our spirit bears with us with our spirit that we're the children of God. So when you go to pray with somebody, this is not a total stranger that's walked in. When you go to pray with another believer, that is your brother and sister in Christ. Amen. And I know you might not agree with my next statement. We should be closer to our brothers and sisters in Christ than we are our own blood kin. Yep. Spiritually. Yep. That's your brother and sister. Mm -hmm. That relationship will continue to go on after your blood family passes away. Your spiritual family will last forever. Amen. So don't you think we, we ought to be laid up some treasures in heaven whereby moth and rust cannot corrupt right. and a thief can't break through and steal? Mm -hmm. Prayers do that. Prayers do that. And it goes on to look down at 1 Corinthians 14. So in other words, what I was talking about in Matthew 6, when, when you pray any other way except in the Holy Spirit, then you're praying out of the will of God and you're praying out away from God. But 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15 said, What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. And I'll pray with understanding also. I'll sing with the Spirit. I'll sing with understanding also. What he's saying right there is that when, when, when you and I come to pray with someone, 
The Holy Spirit will give you agreement with them over what you're praying about. Amen? Yep. If somebody comes to you broken and hurting or they come to that altar and you decide to go and pray with them, let me tell you something. There is an agreement that happens right there that only God can bring about. There is a peace right there that only God can bring about. And I think because of everything that's happened in our nation, everything that's happened through this sickness, I think all of us as churches, and this pastor included, has missed some special prayer time with folks that are hurting. First Thessalonians 5.17 said, pray without ceasing. How many of you are in a constant, in a constant season of prayer all day long? Anybody? Talking to the Lord all day long? That's praying. You don't have to be on your knees in your closet. Don't y'all talk to him all day long? Say, Lord, help me. Lord this, Lord that. That's a season of prayer. I know I do. Amen. Hurry up, Lord. Get him through that drive through in front of me. Amen. <laughs> All right, Lord, I got behind that man with eight, man with eight kids again. Lord, <laughs> help them decide what they want. Amen. <laughs> but pray without ceasing. That's not only a season of prayer, but, you know, really, as believers in Jesus Christ, we don't have God's permission to ever quit praying. If you've got one ounce of life left in you and you are bedridden and you can't get up on your feet, you can still pray for somebody. You can still, you can still be used of God. I know some great prayer warriors that can't get around at all. First Timothy 2 1, he puts it in perspective. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for everyone. Or some, some verbs that say all the saints. Now, <clears throat> if someone comes forward to pray in a church service or in any other type setting that you, that you are presenting the gospel or that you're sharing with, uh, if they've made the choice to come up here, if they made the choice to go forward in a setting of a gym or at a funeral home or at a, even in a graveyard, if they've made the choice to make that move, it tells me that they've not given up. It tells me they've not given up. They're coming to see the face of God about something rather than giving up. They're, they're doing their part. They're willing to come and hit their knees. They don't care who's watching. They don't care who cares. They don't care whether they're rich. They don't care whether they're poor. They know they have a need and they don't care who's looking. They're coming to do business with God. Aren't you glad that there are some folks and it can be us and we've not given up yet. We're going to go ask God about it. Amen? We're going to go ask God about it. That tells me that. And so when you look at Luke 18, 1, when Jesus is talking to his disciples, it said he spake a parable in them and said they should always pray and not to faint. So if you're watching it via Facebook or YouTube, don't you dare quit. Don't you dare give up. Man. Don't you do it. Don't quit. As long as you can utter a prayer and God is on his throne and his son Jesus Christ is sitting at his right hand, let me tell you something, there's hope for you. Don't you ever quit praying. Yep. There's only one that will tell you not to pray. There's only one that will tell you to be silent and that's Satan himself. He'll say it's too late, give up. Don't listen to him. Yeah. Prayer is... How we communicate. It's how we communicate with God. It's how we talk to God. It's how we can have that alone time with Him. 
Is there anybody here tonight that's guilty of praying too much? How about not enough? If we're honest. And then we wonder why things are not like we think they should be. We're guilty, all right, but not praying too much in this pastor's experience and in his own life. Answer prayer is gives you a potential opportunity to witness to someone. I prayed for such and such, and God answered it. I've got to tell you about it. Amen. Amen. Yep. We tell them about everything else under the sun. How about we tell them the prayer that God has answered? What if we wrote them all down? There's not enough ink in the ocean that song goes. Amen. Of all the things he's done for us. But it creates an opportunity for you to share with someone that there is a higher power out there by the name of God and his son Jesus Christ. That there is hope for you and here's what he did for me. And I, here's what I ask him for. Now, you may not always get what you want with God, amen? amen. But I can assure you, because he loves you, you're going to get what you need, Brother Jamie. Yeah. He's going to see to it that you have what you need. And boy, don't we wonder between those two things, our needs and our wants, amen? amen. There's a line right there. <laughs> we all get right in the middle. And you know what? Sometimes he gives you what you want to. Amen. And prayer strengthens the bond between believers. It makes us stronger. It creates a bond that nothing else on this earth can create. When well, somebody grabs you up, says, I want to pray with you. Hang on to that word with. I want to pray with you. We, we've talked about this a million times in here, and yet still, Satan still fights us, and he'll continue to fight us. Jimmy Duncan there is my brother in Christ, but I know when he tells me that, Brother Mike, I'm praying for you, but I tell you what means a whole lot more to me. And when he grabs me up, and he's done it before, we're in the hallway right over there. I want to pray for you, Pastor. You think that doesn't grab, you think it doesn't grab your pastor's heart? So I believe if we want to really grab the heart of God and use the example that his son Jesus Christ did, we pray more with each other. Amen. And I know it's, it's hard to go against the grain like that because that's where Satan will battle you at. He don't mind you telling somebody you'll just flippantly just say, oh, I'll, I'll be praying for you. Brother Terry, I'll, I'll be praying for you. He ain't going to fight that. <clears throat> But if during a Holy Spirit moment in church and he said, go put your arm around that man and pray for him, that's when the battle comes in. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. That's when the battle comes in. He can't stand us to get closer and stronger together. He can't stand that. And he'll fight it until a chain gets wrapped around him and he's thrown into it. The pit. He'll fight it. He always will fight it. Now you don't have to turn there, but if you were looking at the book of Titus chapter 2, it talks about that, that uh, the aged men ought to be ministering to the aged, to the younger men, and the aged women be ministering to the younger women. That's just good biblical advice. There's nothing wrong with a man praying with a woman or a woman with a man. But it's safer and it also builds a bond between women and women and men and men. And you don't have to worry about things being said. Does everybody get what I'm talking about? Amen. 
ministers have learned the hard way, and I hope you've learned as a believer in Jesus Christ that if you're a man, you have no business with a woman pulling you into a side door over here and shutting the door and so, brother, say, brother, would you pray for me? Men, stay away. Amen? So I'll pray with you standing right out here, sister. Amen? Does anybody get where we're going here? Yeah. Don't dare let Satan drag you right into that. Because he'll place a guilt trip on you. I can't believe you if you turned her down. Well, it might have just saved your ministry and your marriage in the process. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Finally, turn to Philippians <coughs> chapter 1. passage, I don't want you in one one second think that this is me fussing at anybody because somebody came forward to pray Sunday and none of you were the ones to pray with him. You know, there's some folks that need to come pray by themselves and be left alone. Amen? That the Holy Spirit tells us to go pray with them. That's very different, isn't it? Amen? And you'll, you'll know. You will know when that time is. But if you're like me and I had my head down and I'm paying attention to, to that man's needs, I, I could have been there for him. But God took care of it. Isn't it good when we mess up, God covers it anyway. Amen. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 1. We'll, we'll end with this. But pray and decide to pray with somebody or not to pray with somebody. It's kind of like when I was in high school playing baseball. And there was one baseball that's been hit up in the air. And you're in center field. And you've got a right fielder and you've got a left fielder. And my, my friend has passed away by the name of Hewitt Hicks. If the ball ever hit the ground between all three of you and nobody caught it, he said, that's a you take it, I'll get it. <laughs> Anybody get that? You take it, I'll get it. In other words, nobody, nobody steps up and does it. And that happens sometimes when there's somebody that has a need and we're thinking, oh, I, I, I know Brother John's going to go pray with him. Brother John didn't make it. Oh, I, I'm surely, surely Shannon will go pray with him. Shannon didn't make it. Surely, Brother Mike, you of all people ought to have been the first one to go up there and pray with him. You take it, I'll get it. And I didn't mention your old name. John, you, uh, you wasn't even in town, was you? <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody. But when, when, when there is a need, I pray that your pastor be tuned in more than he was. Look what Philippians chapter 1 says, and I'm going to shut up about all that. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. So he's speaking to, to all the servants and the leaders of the church. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. That is almost always an introduction or the end of the letter from Paul. So there's two places that he's got them. Verse 3, he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Sunday night at Oscar Baptist Church, when church was over, I watched a group of folks go all around taking care of all the business of the church. And that very second, 
I thought of my home church. There's so many of you all that do so many things and you don't get a whole lot of thanks from this pastor. And as I watched him, I thought, God, if you let me make it to Wednesday night, I'm going to tell them, thank you for all that you all do. There's only a handful of us here to get paid. Everybody else, you're serving out of your heart. And I want to say thanks. So I thank God for every remembrance of you. It brought, it brought, God brought it to my mind and he said, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy. Unless your heart's broken over something, I think it's a joy to get to pray with someone. For your fellowship and the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which begun to work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Has God ever failed to leave his work undone? God tells you he's going to do something, does he do it? He said, he's going to perform a good work and you. He'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, when he says we'll perform it, it may not have all happened yet, but he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. He's still working on you in that, to perform that. And then he goes to his heart, even as it is meet for me, in other words, proper or good for me to think of this, you all. Where does, he, where does Paul say that he has his church? In our heart. In my heart, he says. Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your, he doesn't say your finances, he doesn't say your teaching, he doesn't say anything. What does he say? That your love may abound. Yet more and more. And your love is going to show up in what? Knowledge and in judgment. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ and the glory and praise of God. I have shared what God would have me share tonight. Yeah. And I hope and pray that It's under the leadership of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ himself that we will begin again to pray for folks. Now who is it according to the Bible that gives you the spirit of fear? He said, I, God, Jesus, I, I give you the spirit of fear, but of power... <coughs> Love and of a sound mind. Yeah. And you have enough Holy Spirit sense about you to know when you need to pray with someone. And you have enough Holy Spirit sense about you to know that it's not safe. Amen. He'll let you know. God will let you know. And I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm talking about all kinds of situations where you can step in and pray with someone. When it doesn't feel right because of the Holy Spirit, then it ain't right. Amen? Yep. Be careful where you're at, out in public with folks and all those things. I'm going to wait just a minute, Brother Mike. You just talk. You sound like you're trying to encourage us to, to do more praying. I am, and myself included. But don't you dare discount the Holy Spirit. Amen? <coughs> you feel safe enough to go break up a gang fight and say, here, let's just pray together. Go ahead and, and uh, I'll be visiting you at the hospital with bullet holes in you. Amen? Use the common sense that God gave you. But I, I believe, according to the Word of God, Brother Jimmy, that prayer changes things. Yeah. It changes people and changes nations. Let's remember to pray for each other. Let's not be afraid. Let's not be afraid. And let's lift up those that are around us.
Let's be, as he said there in that first passage I read, be watchful. Don't be like your pastor, but be more watchful. God bless you. If you don't know Christ tonight, you come. As they sing a hymn, a hymn of invitation. If you need to come and pray, you, you come. Let's try, to, let's try to make it a standard according to the word of God that we are not afraid to pray.